Chapter 9, Reprimands The officer looked at my hands. It's the right one, he said. You shake with the right. Aren't you going to clink the cuffs on me? I've got the head in this bag. I guess they don't make police officers as smart as they used to. All he did was rub his chin and look up at me. That doesn't seem very polite, especially right before class. Miss Melton Mowry came out of her office. Sounds like someone has a, con has a confession to make. She crossed her arms and waited. I resisted the urge to say it was all Delton's fault and looked at my shoes while I figured out my next move. The officer reached into the backpack. Hold it, stepping in. Magda took the head from him and unclipped the curlers. Which ear, she asked me. Left, it's her best side. I explained to Miss Melton Mowry as Magda fitted the head back on the mannequin and spun it around a time or two until it was tight enough to stay on, even if a little crooked. It was time for me to say something. If you want the whole truth and nothing but, I have to tell you it isn't pretty, Miss Melton Mowry. The fact of the matter is, this was all Delton's idea. You don't say. I'm Cassidy. I shook my hands with the police officer, nice and firm. Uh, sorry, Miss Corcoran. And I'm Officer Weston. I kept on shaking, hoping Miss Melton Mowry was taking note of how good I was at introducing myself. And that's my sister Mag, Miss Corcoran the second. Magda didn't answer because she was hyper-focused on misinformation's blouse using her library card to scrape some of the red stuff into her palm. That's not, I broke off for dramatic effect and pressed the back of my hand to my mouth. Blood, is it? Magda sniffed her fingers. Pizza sauce, I think. Officer Weston took a finger full and sniffed it too. Yep, I hauled her out. She was covered in pizza boxes. But you're not allowed to recycle pizza boxes in Grand River. There's been a rash of illegal dumping since the, city, since the city started charging for trash by the pound, Officer Weston added. None of this explains how, he got, how she got there in the first place. Miss, Cor Miss Corcoran and obfuscation is not the way to handle this issue. Miss Melton Mowry's body language, crossed arms, narrowed eyes, one tapping foot, frown, was looking suspiciously like Corcoran family sign language for cut the crap and move it along. How can I obfuscate if I don't know what it is? I asked. It means to confuse the issue, she said, or skirt around it. Really, I had no idea there was a word for the very thing I'm genius at. I put my feet together and straightened my shoulders. I agree completely, Miss Melton Mowry. Speaking of skirts, I'm guessing Magda here would be happy to donate one of hers to misinformation. She has a whole closet full that she never wears. Isn't that right, Magda? I had to poke her before she nodded. Miss Melton Mowry's arms stayed crossed. I'm waiting, Miss Corcoran. The thing of it is, we felt misinformation needed a makeover. We had a real beauty queen do it. We had a real beauty queen to do it. And the we is you and Delton? The other students were coming in, even though there was still five minutes before class started. Is everyone who takes etiquette lessons a suck up? Delton Bean almost fainted when he saw Officer Weston. You're not arresting Cassidy, are you? I put my hands on Delton's shoulders. No, Delton, he's arresting you on the charge of gross bodily harm and fleeing the scene of a crime. I hope you brought along a change of clothes. Delton looked like he did the day he got an 89% on his math test, or like the day he dropped his graphing calculator in the mud. I'm not here to arrest anyone, Officer Delton said. I'm here for class. But you're a grown-up. My fiancé says I'm un an uncivilized clod, and if I don't get some manners by July and her big family reunion, she's not going through with the wedding. So, I asked him, what's the problem? Which is how Officer Weston and I became friends, because he didn't see the problem with it either. Well, with being an uncivilized clod. Then and there we made a pact to see if this manners thing, th excuse me, then and there we made a pact to see this manners thing through to the bitter end. Of course, what remained was the issue of taking responsibility for vandalizing misinformation. I favored an all's well that ends well approach, but as I have discovered in my 11 years on this planet, grown-ups are big on responsibility. After she'd interrogated me and dealt in enough times to be satisfied and had a long conference with Mom and Mrs. Bean, Ms. Melton Mowry asked for time to think about how best we could serve out our sentence. I felt etiquette class was punishment enough, but I knew the drill. She wanted us to stew. As we were leaving, Miss Melton Mowry pulled me aside. 
though I am not as familiar with the W.E.E. -E holds as you are, you will find me a formidable opponent, Miss Corcoran. How would you say that in wrestling terminology? I think that's, you're on the ropes. W.W.E., Miss Melton Mowry. I didn't give her the satisfaction of telling her I wasn't just on the ropes. I was down for the count. Dad got home late that night. I couldn't fall asleep thinking of him, tired from making grocery shoppers happy all day, having to hear about my latest mess up. Right on time, he showed up at my door. I understand you've been very busy, Miss Cassidy. Dad! I untangled myself from the covers and reached out to him. Bear hug. We both growled. So, kidnapping, destruction of private property. Sitting down on the edge of my bed, Dad added, I thought you aspired to a life on the road, not a life of crime. It wasn't kidnapping, Dad. It was more like hide-and-seek. And it was all Delton's fault, really. His mom wanted him to learn some do-daring, and I... Delton Bean, the one who turns his back to the audience during the Christmas concert? Mrs. Parsons called it the worst case of performance anxiety she's ever seen. I'm beginning to think you have the worst case, worst case of good behavior anxiety I've ever seen. Did Delton really force you to behead mis misinformation? As counsel for the defendant, I need to know everything. When my dad puts his hand on my head and looks into my eyes, it's like being forced to drink truth serum from a voodoo doctor. No, it was my idea to put her hair in the soup bowl. I just figured she had a wig. I didn't know it was attached to her head, like real hair. Yes, hair has a way of being attached to the head. You do understand how wrong that was. Yep, and two wrongs don't make a right. I hope to hurry the lecture part of this conversation to an end. I should have told Miss Melton Mopey Mowry what I'd done. Taking my hand, Dad started massaging my palm, going under each knuckle and pressing. It was one of his strategies for helping me relax so I could fall asleep. What continues to surprise me about you, Miss Cassidy, is that given two courses of action, you almost always choose the most difficult one. Why is that? I shrugged. I'm an overachiever? I could tell by the look on his face that this answer didn't satisfy him. Search me, Dad. Before he got his second wind about how, despite my above average intelligence, I could be a real knucklehead, I tried to change the subject to what was really bugging me. Dad, why does Jack all of a sudden have goals like saving money? And why does he want to hang around Sabrina Benson instead of hanging out with me? By Sabrina Benson, you mean new neighbor Bensons? Sweet tea, have a sugar cookie, Sabrina and Mrs. Benson? Yep. You're not moving us from the intricacies of the law to the eternal mysteries of the heart, are you? Dad put his left hand on my left hand under the covers and started pressing the palm of my right hand. No, I just want to know why he'd rather be with her than with me. Well, since I haven't observed Jack and Sabrina together, I couldn't say. Sabrina seems like a very nice girl. A little old for Jack, maybe, but then your mom and I are three years apart. Ugh, Dad, I'm not talking about that. What, then, pray tell, are you talking about? I don't know. That's why I asked you. Lifting the sheet, Dad put my hand back down by my side before kissing the top of my head. You're going to have to let me ponder that one, Miss Cassidy. Your question is complicated. Now, regarding the matter of your sentencing, which we will skip to since you've already confessed to the crime, your mom and I will be joining you and Miss Melton Mowry after Wednesday's class to discuss the matter. That's okay, Dad. You don't have to come. I know how busy you are saving the grocery store from disaster. True, but I wish to be present at my client's sentencing, so instead of taking a walk in the park and feeding the, dunk, the ducks on my lunch hour, I think I will eat my sandwich at my desk and drive across town so that I can spend that time with you at the Bright Corners strip mall. I scrunched my eyes closed to avoid Dad launching into the Your Actions Affect Other People speech. I'm practically asleep, Dad. Can we save the rest for another time? Before Wednesday's class, Delton tried to go through the door to the school of poison porpoise before me. Hey, watch your manners. I pulled him back by the, by the shoulder. Ladies first. Geez. Sorry, Cassidy. I'm just trying to be punctual. I am impressed with your almost lateness. Try harder next week. Everyone was pretty much seated by the time we got in. Donna was polishing silverware with some special cloth she brought from home. Ryan was tugging wrinkles out of the tablecloth. It was like a meeting of the after-school teacher's pet club. Mr. Bean, Miss Corcoran, you may take your seats on either side of Officer Weston. Yes, Miss Melton Mowry. Delton took his eyes off the floor only as long as it required 
him to see the way to his chair. Donna raised her hand. Is this our new misinformation? All eyes went to the seat previously occupied by the world's biggest doll, where a lady in a raincoat sat holding so tight to the oversized handbag in her lap. You'd have thought this was the meeting of the after-school purse snatchers club. Misinformation, Miss Melton Mowry paused, letting her eyes rest on me, is undergoing some renovation. But allow me to introduce you to Miss Glennon. Miss Glennon is the granddaughter of Private Reserve Academy founder Eudora Glennon, who has been, over the years, a personal mentor of mine. Miss Glennon is with us today on a very special assignment. Another meaningful look at me. Miss Glennon swallowed and squeezed the top of her purse like it was a stress ball. Her eyes darted around the room, avoiding eye contact. If we were in Cassidy Corcoran's executive school for, sp for spies and counterintelligence agents, I would have taught her about Iridium. Sure as my keister was glued to that plastic seat, the lady was hiding something. Miss Glennon was just about to demonstrate the proper placement of one's purse. Miss Melton Mowry proceeded to pinch the purse as if it was a used Kleenex on the floor just next to the chair leg. No, please, I need that. As Miss Melton Mowry lifted and Miss Glennon tugged back, the purse squealed. Before you could say, time for recess, out popped a furry head, its eyes darting around just like Miss Glennon's hat, looking for an escape route. The, cr the critter chose to dive under the flap of Miss Glennon's raincoat. Donna forgot to raise her hand. Ooh, she squealed. That's a rat. My disgusting brother has one just like it. We have a strict no-dander policy here at the school, Miss Glennon. I must ask you to remove that animal immediately. Grabbing her lapels to prevent another escape, Miss Glennon tried to explain. I couldn't leave her in the car. By the end of class, it would be too hot. It's her annual physical today. Appointments are very hard to make with Dr. Schoen. Only two veterinarians specialize in long-tailed rodents in Grand River, and I would never take feathers to the doctor. At this point, Miss Glennon was interrupted by a head popping out of the neck of her coat, just under her chin. What Feathers saw must have frightened her enough to go back the way she came. The next glimp we, glimpse we got was of the rat's nose through a torn seam in the arm of Miss Glennon's coat. At this point, Miss Peabody, one of the half-dozen wimpy girls in our class, announced that she was going to faint. Put your head between your legs, Officer Weston instructed, not taking his hands off the incredible bulging raincoat. Feathers managed to poke her head out between two buttons on Miss Glennon's lap. The raincoat belt draped over her excuse me the raincoat belt draped over her head like one of those scarves old ladies wear to protect their hairdos all the fancy pants manners went out the window as miss glennon struggled to keep feathers in her coat and we watched the bulge move to the tune of girls screaming their heads off clutching herself here and there our visitor gave the impression that she was possessed by aliens officer weston elbowed me wow Manners class is better than I thought. End of chapter 9.